It's loading. All right. We are live. Awesome. Well, welcome to the third season of the B-Side Sessions hosted by Michigan Music Alliance. I can't believe this is the third season um, that we're hosting already, and it seems to keep getting more and more nitty gritty, and I'm excited to dig in tonight and talk to um, these artists and content creators about their journey with TikTok. It's been around for a second now, and it's not going anywhere. So um, if you have questions, we want to hear what they are, and we'll chat about them. So feel free to drop questions in the comments. And then this session, if you missed the live stream, it will be up on our website, Facebook, and YouTube. And all of the uh, handles for the participants will be posted there as well. So after the fact, if you have a question too, uh, go ahead and tag us and we'll, we'll have some dialogue. But tonight we're gonna get into a little bit about everyone's journey with the app so far and um, different tips, tricks, and things they wish they had known when they got started and things they wish they still knew maybe. So, um, I'm excited for you guys to meet everybody. We're kind of spread out. We're not all in Michigan, but a few of us are. So um, we're excited to have these guests spending their evening with us. And let's start with our repeat offender here. Um, well, if you joined us last January um, in, let's see, 2020 or 20, yeah, 2021 um, for the social media session. And thank you for coming back. Do you want to give us a little bit of a background about what you do and uh, how you got into TikTok? Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be back. And uh, primarily, I teach about the music business and technology, the media industries at Syracuse University. And I've been a professor here for the last like 17 or 18 years. So it's it's been a long time. So I've taught all of our music business courses and uh, really helped develop some of the social media and data classes that we have here as well. So, you know, my first foray into TikTok was really the result of having to teach about it. You know, I figured I could not be in front of a classroom talking about TikTok, speaking to 17, 18, 19 year olds if I didn't really understand and know the platform myself. And so jumped on and uh, it was a lot of trial and error for the first probably three months of being on TikTok. Um, first month was probably all watching. And then I started to create some content. And uh, I really tell three stories on my TikTok account. I mean, I was born with one hand. And so as a result of that, I tell uh, lots of jokes uh, about myself, never jokes about anyone else, um, because I think there's a fine line between being funny with your own uh, personal being and infringing upon the feelings of others. So all my jokes are about me. Um, but I'll tell one-handed jokes. Uh, I also will uh, share my story for the last year where I decided to get into living van life. And I lived in an SUV uh, through the winter here in upstate New York and ultimately bought an RV. And now I am 354 days into my journey of living van life. And so I'll share some tips and tricks about that and document the process. Uh, and I also race triathlon, which is where my uh, handle comes from, 70.3. Typically, they're half Ironman races, and I'll document that as well. So on TikTok, I've got about 171,000 followers and uh, 7.3 million likes on the content that I've created so far. Wow. And thanks for jumping in again and uh, joining us this evening. We appreciate it. Um, let's go over to Jay. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you've gotten involved with TikTok and who you are as an artist? Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jay Squared. Um, I recent I got on TikTok back during the kind of the start of really like 2018, really. I wasn't really on TikTok like that because I immediately associated it with like being like 13 and like that's just the app for 13 year olds. So I was just like, not gonna do it. And then it was just during the, you know, 2020 pandemic uprise is when I first started to go like, 
let me see what's up with this whole TikTok thing. I didn't try to put any deep thought into it more so than I just really wanted to just something to do and just tell jokes on. And after a while, I started to build um, some consistency with uh, just just posting stuff regularly. And I built a nice little follow base for myself on there. Uh, I mainly do music. I am a music artist, content creator. I uh, play PlayStation most days. And uh, yeah, so that is kind of my backstory on TikTok in general. And uh, I've learned a lot. I've learned, a lot. I learned a lot. I've definitely wish I knew some things. I, kn I know some things that I wish I knew, you know, and I am ready to share. So I'm glad to be here and be here with all these lovely panelists. Yes, I am going to mute myself now. <laughs> Thank you. And Imelda, tell us about you and your TikTok. Um, when, when did you get on the app and uh, what's your main type of content? Um, hello. Um, yeah, I started doing TikTok like, I okay, so I started doing it, I'd say like 2019, right when the COVID um, pandemic hit. And then I just made some videos. I hadn't really gotten in, into music making at that point. Like I've always been a musician, but I hadn't produced my own music at that point. Um, and then I sort of just let the account die and then deleted it because it, it wasn't doing much. And then I started producing music about a year ago. And um, at first it was just like covers. So I was like, whatever. And then I started um, producing like original songs. And then everyone was like, you should promote your music on TikTok. And I was like, that's a good idea because if you think about it, there's not a lot of places, especially during a pandemic for an artist to really get started um, with promoting themselves. So I started making videos and it was like a lot of trial and error. Um, and eventually I sort of like, I'm still definitely figuring things out. Like y'all are way more advanced than me when it comes to TikTok, but, um, I'd say like, uh, just from doing it for the past few months and, um, seeing the response I've gotten, I think like I can sort of gauge the algorithm a little bit better now, but there's a lot of stuff about not only just TikTok, but just like um, the whole promotion, being a musician and also being an entrepreneur, like lots of stuff I'd like to learn. So thanks for having me. Oh, we're happy you're here. Thanks for spending your evening with us. And then Tay, tell us about Push Talk. I hadn't heard of that until I started digging in about this session. So tell us about uh, push talk and how you got started with the whole company. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Itai and I'm the CEO of Push Talk. Uh, we're a small company, uh, so that's probably why you've never heard of us. Uh, we're pretty new as well. Um, I actually cut my teeth as an agent, uh, talent agent for a long time. Um, long, long time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but back in 20, late 2018, I kind of became a little bit more aware of TikTok. Um, met a few influencers when I was working in LA um, and just kind of asked them questions. Um, spent, spent a good six months just asking questions, digging into these people's profiles and figuring out what it is that they're doing um, that makes their fan acquisition so effective. Because um, really my goal in life overall is to help artists find fans. Um, so I looked at TikTok as more of a tool to bring in fans into your ecosystem rather than get big on TikTok or blow up on social media. Um, and that's, that's kind of how the idea was born to build a platform that will help artists uh, do that. So it started as a tech tool to help artists connect with micro influencers and also for micro influencers to start monetizing their pages. And it really kind of moved on from there into being an ads platform or a white label ads product for artists. So like basically if you want to run your ads more effectively, 
uh, you can run through us. Uh, we did that with Cade here. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. He was actually one of the first artists that tried it. Um, and I think since March, when we launched the actual product, we probably worked with about 500 artists, um, which was a huge life experience for me. And uh, yeah, and so far we're really excited for, for this journey. Awesome. Yeah, that's a lot in a very short amount of time. So that's off to you for sure. Um, Kate, I know you guys know each other because you did that campaign together. This is the first time you've like met virtually or in person, sort of, right? Yeah, Itai actually helped my TikTok a lot. Uh, I met him through a friend. But so everyone, my name is Cade. I'm from Toronto in Canada. And I am a musical artist entrepreneur as well as an electronic music producer, or I, I, I'm just a producer, meaning like pop music and, and EDM, th those are my main things. But TikTok, so uh, along with like producing for other artists, I, I produce my own EDM as well. And TikTok really, really helped push my, my artist brand so hard. Like TikTok is my, my savior for, as Itai said, bringing fans into, into my Alex Kate ecosystem. Alex Kate is my, is my EDM duo. But because of TikTok, like other than just bringing in fans, uh, other than just bringing in fans, I've been able to use the platform to slide into like big creators and big artists DMs. And I, I was able to do so many official remixes with people like Kaylee, Kaylee Spivey, Trey Little, Emily Vu. These are all people with like hundreds of thousands to like a million something followers. And TikTok is just like, oh, I love it. But yeah, I, I, I met Itai through my friend Rohan, who's also like a TikTok genius. His band is Karolanka, and he basically got me on TikTok. He's like, yo, just like get your old YouTube videos, cut them up into like 15 second little chunks and post it up. And then I did that. And then my first video hit like 400,000 in a night. I'm like, oh, so that's the power of TikTok. And I, I've been on TikTok since March, February, 2020. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And um, so we'll kind of do a little lightning round questions here because I know that a lot of artists have already asked us to talk about monetization and quite a few of you have experienced doing that so far in your kind of path with this. Um, so I'm excited to ask this question because I think you can take it multiple different ways, um, each of you, but as musicians and just creators in general, what is different about TikTok for you and what attracted you to that medium, essentially? Um, basically, what, what exactly is special about that app for you and um why would you recommend it to someone else and we'll start with um Ulf, if that's okay yeah absolutely um for me the the draw was a, a better platform that would really illustrate short form storytelling you know and i'm telling three different stories and i think every artist out there has multiple stories that they can tell and, you know, I approach it as sort of a, a longer story arc. If I'm telling the story of my triathlon season, that's something that's going to last several months. Uh, living small, something that lasts several months. And then when you tell a joke, that's something that might be 10 seconds, 15, 30, 50. And, and you know, that story is built in a certain way surrounding TikTok. So for me, it was uh, a big opportunity to share that story and then try to monetize the content that I was creating. And I think, you know, if we pass it off to some of the artists in the room, uh, I think you guys are the, the best ones to talk about how you're monetizing things first. And then, you know, I'll circle back and share some of the ways that uh, a creator outside of music might be monetizing. Awesome. Sorry if the internet connection breaks up a little bit too, just heads up on that. Um, Jay, same question. Um, so pretty much TikTok has kind of became a medium for me, uh, marketing wise, I guess I never really looked at it like that because I was just kind of just, it's one of those platforms you just be transparent on, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm, uh, all I do is just pretty much just do me and that in itself is its own promotion. You know what I mean? That like, I feel like I've never really tried to. Uh, 
for lack of a better term, fake the funk or something. You know what I'm saying? I try, I, I try not to put too much thought into like, you know, TikToks and stuff like that, unless I genuinely think it's something notable or funny or something like that. And I most likely just have my music kind of tied in there somehow. And that was kind of the thing that made me say, hmm, okay, I can see TikTok being a very important tool for um, just to enhance my music career. Um, it's, it's helped a lot. I will say that. I met, it's funny, Kate, I actually met Trey Little at a, a, uh, like this mixer one, <laughs> like at this mixer. He's really cool. He's exactly how uh, he is on uh, TikTok. So, but yeah, so, at, you know, TikTok has helped help, help me meet a lot of different people. Um, I've gotten to a lot of different conversations due to TikTok, um, um, producers, uh, uh, stuff, you know, and um, it's definitely helped me a lot. Um, it's, I will say it, I will say TikTok isn't the end all be all for a music artist, but it's definitely very helpful and it's been a very massive tool for a music artist, especially me, so. That's, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Imelda, what about you? What um, particularly about TikTok drew you to it? Um, I think part of it was out of like necessity because I think um, especially with a pandemic, like a lot of people were not able to gig or have these consistent well, not consistent, but basically their revenue stream that they're used to. And um, so I feel like part of it is just like, this is the way of the world. Like we're moving in this direction anyway. This is kind of like, I think it's um, influenced the music industry, both for good and for bad, because there are definitely, um, I don't know, there is a demand for constant content. And I don't think that that's the best way for artists to thrive necessarily. But I also think it helps you reach people who will turn into long term fans. Um, it's for me, like the hook to get people interested in you. And then you direct them to here's my YouTube, here's all my other social media, because this is how I'm going to make the money. And also it has helped me personally, as far as like making money goes from TikTok, like there is a creator fund, which um, I, yeah, I don't have a lot of thoughts on that. I think it's cool that they're paying creators because um, like, like there's tons of people who are making a good amount of money from TikTok, which is awesome. Um, but also I would say like, it definitely has helped me get seen by people who can help me make money. Like, even if it's not directly through TikTok, it's like, I've gotten sponsorships from people who saw my videos online and then reach out to me. And that's super important because um, that's basically led to everything I have now, like doing gigs and having sponsorships. So um, yeah. <laughs> That's super cool. Um, Cade, same question for you. Yo, TikTok is just so, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just so easy to blow up on TikTok. Like if you're not on it, you got, you got to be on it, especially as a music artist. Again, it's not be all end all, but it's just, it's just so easy. And you have to spend literally zero dollars to do it. It's just practice making content. Like <laughs> I, I, I've told so many of my artist friends, and like uh, I do a bunch of consultations and help other artists get on TikTok as well, but for the ones who actually listen to me, they they see results literally like within like just a few months, and their fan base grows and all that. And all the people who don't listen, they're just kind of you know stuck there. But it's just it's there and it's free. And Instagram doesn't have that organic reach. You got you got to pay with Instagram, Facebook. You got YouTube is just so saturated now. Um, SoundCloud doesn't isn't the same anymore but like tiktok yo that it's just it's so cheap and simple to to blow up on tiktok so like if you want to grow your fan base get on tiktok it is, it is probably the best decision of your life so it sounds like what i'm hearing is a lot of like free marketing tools and you get out of it what you put into it and uh from kind of i guess a different perspective it's what 
what do you tell artists who are trying to get their music on like what what kind of drew you to see that as a need and like what's your what are your main reasons for encouraging people to do that I'm gonna press it I'm gonna like actually tack on to something um okay, go for it like, yeah if you're not on TikTok you're missing out um and that and I'm gonna say the same thing because I've been like running experiments uh since like 2018 um not trying to market TikTok but I am trying to create a sense of urgency with artists to explain to them, this is not gonna, it's not gonna last forever. Um, more and more people are hopping on this platform as it becomes more and more saturated, you're less likely to blow up. Um, so if you are planning on growing your fan base, definitely do it ASAP. Um, what really drew me in the sense of like, I wanna build tools for this specific thing was a very specific campaign that I ran. Uh, back in 2019 that was just insanely successful. Um, it was with a brand and not with a musician. Um, and I thought, okay, if, if a brand can spend $50,000 uh, on the course of a day on TikTok and see this kind of results, what can a music artist that only has a couple hundred dollars in their pocket can get from this. Um, and that's when I started kind of like running experiments with that. But really the thing that really drew me uh, was probably the thing that drew all into TikTok. And that's a, the ability to, store, to tell stories and get them heard. Because that's a part of the story with overall social media, I hate that word, but like with online platforms or, or with anything, a big part of the story is ha like having the story heard and having people reciprocate and talk to interact with the story and interact with the creator. Uh, and I think that, that TikTok does that beautifully. That's number one. And then number two, it highlights authenticity, um, which is something that like, I, I feel like Instagram used to do that very early on. But then the more and more Instagram became more and more popular, the more polished it became. So Instagram kind of became, okay, this is the person you'll never be. This is the model sleep, like sitting on the beach, like uh, in a resort, you'll never be able to afford drinking a cocktail that costs $50. Um, and, if you, and if you're not them, then you're gonna have a very difficult time being successful. Um, and you, you have to put like some sort of a facade on you every time you go on Instagram versus TikTok is, well, shit, I can just be myself and I can do, you know, just do me and be, be myself and, and tell my story the way that I want to. And if it's engaging enough, people will actually help me tell that story forward, I guess. That kind of goes off something that Jay said about just being able to be himself as he's creating content. And uh, Jay, I know we talked a little bit about um, consistency with posting and things like that and, you know, coming up with interesting content. And do you want to talk a little bit about consistency and kind of what you found works for you and your brand? And we'll, we'll kind of take that question around the room a little bit. Man, consistency is like, key <laughs> it's key it consistency with without consistency actually don't even get on any platform if you're not going to be consistent on it honestly like that goes for instagram that goes for uh whatever you're trying to you know build especially spotify or uh, apple music or all of those other um streaming services consistency is key um i've started to this isn't really about tiktok but I started to build um, a follow base on my Instagram via my Instagram reels. And it's just mainly because my manager and uh, my friend, uh, Jason, pretty much has told me, hey man, you gotta check out this Instagram reels. I'm like, what is this, TikTok too? So I'm like, oh, we got another TikTok. Everyone's trying to get on the TikTok bandwagon, but it's just like Instagram reels was, I just got like a different approach with it because like, I started to look at it the same way, you know what I mean? It didn't really feel like 
just like a tie said about you know how in, it you know instagram oh you're on instagram you know that feeling of instagram but but with reels i kind of just was able to still express myself and be um authentic as possible and con and by being consistent i was able to gain that traction um yeah consistency is very important i say especially going back to TikTok, how I started to, how everything started to grow, like I was posting two TikToks a day. I told myself, I'm going to try to post at least one, but maybe two TikToks a day. That would be my goal. And ever since then, that's just kind of how it went. Like, and I would post literally anything, anything. If I thought it was funny, I'm posting it. If I thought I was creative, I'm posting it. I, if I had just some bars i'm posting it you know what i mean like it's it didn't matter but like it, at the end of the day i you kind of got to treat it like a relationship right if you love your partner right you're not just about to ignore them you know what i'm saying because these are people that are watching you that actually want to see you they want to they they enamored by just your story just by you your character your charisma your your little thing that you do you know what i'm saying so like when you're on these social platforms you got to really be tailoring yourself into saying like oh man i gotta be on such and such just because such and such in Dallas is thinking about me right now and they were super excited for the last TikTok that I posted. It might not seem that big of a deal in the grand scheme, but it's the most pivotal and important thing when it comes down to this content creation thing is that people are watching and they want to see you and you got to give to receive. So yeah, and the only way to do that is to be consistent and authentic. So yeah. That's a really cool uh, way to look at it. And it we were talking about consistency and, and that kind of moves us towards monetization a little bit. Um, well, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started, you know, monetizing TikTok and making that something really viable um, for your time? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for me, I never set out and said I wanted to make money from TikTok, but as the audience grew and as my content was consumed, you know, you start to build this following and uh, ultimately could be invited to the creator fund. And, and I, you know, entered the creator fund as soon as I could so I could get paid for every one of the views of the content that I create. And that was one revenue stream. Uh, there's also the creator marketplace that is sort of a brand meets creator. Um, you can negotiate your prices on uh, sponsored posts. So because I'm somewhat in the fitness world uh you know i'm talking to some companies there and in many of those cases you will get product and um some money for a series of posts surrounding that particular content uh i also have my venmo in you know in my bio and i have made like literally thousands of dollars from people just dropping cash into my venmo and you know some of my audience is a little bit older and a little bit more affluent and they're following for triathlon content and you know some of those races are 700 800 just for the entry fee and so you know if they're if they're well off uh, absolutely slide right into my venmo I'm happy to take that um and and that's worked out really well for me and then in the music space i've got a lot of record labels that have reached out and they are trying to get me to use their music and so along with that, I'm getting merchandise from artists uh, and also payments from, uh, you know, companies that are responsible for marketing music. And that placement of music in TikToks is another revenue stream. So I'm getting it in three or four different ways. That's really neat. So you're getting revenue from basically, you know, these companies or these artists. And on the other side, Cade, uh, how do you monetize TikTok as an artist? Yes, yeah, so it's, I'm I'm in Toronto, and Canada doesn't have the creator fund at all. So all the videos I make, like all four million something views I've ever gotten, like I have not been paid for any of them. So I gotta find other ways to monetize, and I think what? the best way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I get paid. I do TikTok for free, but the people who make the best free content uh get paid the most money that's that's what i that's what i Period. like to think about 
but that's how true. I do it is, is just, you know, on TikTok, it's a lot harder to connect with people, like deep connections with fans, because the, the messaging is kind of really, really trash on TikTok. It's just, it's just a bad platform for like DMs and like sliding to other people's DMs. So what I've been doing is getting them onto Instagram, like telling, like all my, all my TikToks are literally just like, yo, follow me on Instagram so I can thank you personally um, for liking this video or something right or yeah something like that and just bring them off the platform so like you know if tiktok just dies i have them on instagram now and then i kind of do a bunch of other things send them some links make more content um and get their emails email lists email lists email lists email lists so important but just getting as many emails as i can so you know when i got merch dropping when i got a new song out i actually released a song recently and i didn't put it on any streaming platforms and we made like at least we made like 6,000 from that, just from like sales of the song and just upsells, right? And I didn't put on streaming platforms. So it's just so important to, you know, get that audience and keep that audience, whether it's through email, Instagram, there's so many other ways, but pull them off of TikTok. If, yeah, pull, just pull them off of TikTok so you can have them elsewhere. That, that's how I, I, would, I would go about monetizing your audience. And that's like my main way of making money because we don't got Venmo here. We don't got Cash App. Like we got PayPal, but it's just PayPal so bleh, in Canada. Canada yeah <laughs> well in Canada right um that's really interesting I didn't know that about the creator fund in Canada um it and that's a really good point to pull them off of that platform and try to interact with them in other ways I know when I followed you I got a video that was like personalized and like excited that you're here and um kind of broke that that conversation where you know instead of just passively watching something maybe i'm gonna send you know messages back and stuff now because that that ice has been cracked and um i haven't i hadn't really had anyone do that before when i followed them so um that was a really unique trick that i thought was was really cool um and definitely you know made me kind of feel special for following you know like oh i'm part of something now so that was a really cool um thing you did um, let's go back to Amelda. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you monetize TikTok and um, how you got started doing that? Um, I'd say most of my money from TikTok comes from, I am on the creator fund, um, but uh, a lot of it comes from just like the opportunities that I get from the visibility that TikTok gives me. Um, so I, I think you have to be at 10,000 followers on TikTok to be in the creator fund, at least here. Um, so that was like my goal starting out is just like get 10,000 followers. And then from there you can like, you'll have a lot more opportunity. Um, and then I joined the creator fund. It's like pretty nice because if you have a video that does really well, it's like, you get paid for it um and if you're making content consistently it's pretty much like okay i can count on that um not saying it's a ton of money but if you're getting a lot of views it adds up um and then i have considered the uh bio venmo thing <laughs> but um yeah i just haven't done that because like um Ulf said like um a lot of his uh viewers are older and a lot of my audience is like you know younger people who are broke like me so it's like i'm not trying to be like cash at me because i know they don't have any money but um just like that and then also um sponsored posts that's the best thing getting a sponsorship because that is like a security blanket like okay, I have at least for the next six months, I got them asking for videos, you know? Um, that's super important. And I'd say if anything, it adds to your legitimacy as an artist, it makes you look legitimate. If you're making ads for people, people are like, okay, they have enough of a following for them to make ads. It's like, it definitely, um, that's super helpful. So yeah, I started making videos for DistroKid and um 
that's definitely been super helpful with like the direction of my TikTok and just um, like me figuring out what I want my brand to be really online. Um, Cause like DistroKid is pretty much like a lot, pretty much everyone I know who distributes their own music uses a DistroKid. So um, yeah, stuff like that. I just say um, like one, you could reach out to people um, on your own and just like appear very professional. But also if you're just presenting yourself online as making it clear, like, this is what I do. This is what I am here to do. I make videos about X, Y, and Z. Um, people will pick up on that if you do it consistently and then you can definitely make money from it in ways you wouldn't even imagine. That's awesome. And that kind of brings to the next question, which I'll throw to Jay first, because we talked about this a little bit before. Um, how do you know you're ready to start going after those sponsorships and those sponsored posts? Um, and what are brands and companies looking for that would make you someone who would be really viable for them to work with? So in, in your experience, how, how has that gone for you? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I can only, I, I guess I can only just speak for how it, how it works for me, you know? So I assume that brands kind of want to asso align and associate themselves with welcoming and inviting brands, other inviting artists or creators. So that way it's kind of like, hey, sangria, or hey, you know, burritos, beverages, you know what I'm saying? Like, check this out. You know, it's more, you can kind of like take it in a little bit better, I think. Um, that's kind of my thing. It, it, I feel like all of it, with any type of company that you would work for, even if you weren't a content creator, you should kind of always try to put your best self forward and, you know, try to represent put your best self forward and try to represent yourself not only as a brand, but just as a, a good person. And people like to align themselves with good people and brands want to align themselves with uh, good stuff. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. But funny enough, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Funny enough, I literally worked on the other side of both of these campaigns that you mentioned. Oh, well, <laughs> hey. Like the Welcome. Hershey girls and Sangria, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, a shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not alcoholic. It's not alcoholic. So, -alcoholic. Just so y'all know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun though. It's so fun. Like, honestly, I feel like if you're a creator and you're getting these brand, like, like sponsorships, like, like y'all, like y'all was just saying, TikTok is not about to be here forever, dog. Y'all remember what happened to Vine. I was on Vine. And I was having fun on Vine for real. I wasn't like in no like you know creative fund or anything like that. I was just making vines. But now, now that I've built my you know follow base to where it's been and I continue to grow it, and the fact that brands are able to reach out, oh, you better <laughs> you better get it. Like, <laughs> man, hey, just come on down to America. You know what I'm saying? Just come on over here, get you in that content creator fund. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's fun though if you don't have if you can't like acknowledge the fun out of it and just the love for just life itself just to enjoy that in itself is you know that's that's I feel like you'll gravitate that gravitate to that type of work and that type of stuff naturally in my opinion oh sorry so go, go on go ahead oh just just to add on to Jay's thing like I again, I don't have no creator fund. I don't get any sponsorships or whatever because Canada. Mm -hmm. But I make these videos. I make so many videos and I do them all for free because I find mm -hmm. it fun and I love it. So you really, you know, you got you got to love it and you find you the fun in it and then you will you will thrive and you will succeed. It's so it's so key because it's just like you can't let man, you are you. Don't let these social media platforms swallow you up and you know eat you up. You're you. You gotta you gotta present yourself in the platform. Don't let the platform present you. You know what I'm saying? Like like, hey, I am in TikTok. Where's the donuts? You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at. You know, that's the type of person I am. 
And I feel like that's I I feel all that energy around y'all too. So you feel me? So yeah, that have fun with it. Because otherwise, you know, it's just it's just work. It's just a job. It's just, huh, well, I'm just, you know, I get my little bread from here and there. Like, no, bro, I sangria, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be over here just sitting here. Dancing with this thing. <laughs> but, I, yeah. I, I Jay, I, I agree with you. You gotta have fun with this. And mm -hmm. it, it's not authentic. And it's not something that you want to be a part of. Uh, yeah. It's not going to be a good fit for you as an artist. Uh, yeah. I do think the question of when you integrate with brands and, and all that, it's really important because, you know, when we look at developing acts, uh, they're not ripe for brand partnerships in many cases just yet. They're still figuring out their stories. They maybe haven't had the consistency yet. And so I think, you know, it, it, getting the brand deals, getting into the creator fund, that shouldn't be your first priority when you're jumping on a platform like this. Create the content that you want to share, and there's plenty of ways to monetize it. I love the idea of putting the, the Venmo or a Cash App or something in your bio. Um, and if you don't want to put that specifically, find something like you know the, the apps that will let you, uh, as a fan, buy a cup of coffee for an artist that you like. Because if you have 10,000 followers and you can get everyone to buy you a cup of coffee, for $5 a piece, that's $50,000. Your fans want to support you and they will support you in, in micro payments if you will accept micro payments. And not everyone is ready for a $1,000 brand deal, a $500 brand deal, even a $100 brand deal. Um, recognizing how you can monetize the audience that you do have is really important though. One thing that we haven't talked about is what's coming down the road and that's gonna be social commerce. The idea that you can sell your own merchandise to your fans while you're doing a live stream on TikTok. And now you're taking products and intellectual property that you own, products that you've already created, or if you're going to work with a print on demand shop, uh, and you're selling your likeness, your images, your music to the audience that wants to support you. So think about different ways to use a platform like this to monetize your career outside of TikTok paying you, outside of a brand paying. You can literally have, just like on Instagram, you can have um, your TikTok connected to a Shopify account and have a print on demand set up and you don't have to invest anything besides I think it's like $29.99 uh, for Shopify and just sell your merch on TikTok. I think that's like such a great you know, idea. Or you can sell your TikTok videos as NFTs too. I mean, it sounds like a like a stupid idea, but no one's tried it, so it could work. If you want to try it, legitimately, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking at. You know, I've got one of my TikToks that is about 19 million views, and you know, I, yeah, I would absolutely consider selling that as an NFT. Now, there's some issues with uh, music clearances if you're using someone else's song in the background. But if there was just a joke that I was telling, I could take that that video and yeah, mint it as an NFT and, and make some money off of it. That's really cool. I didn't even know that was a, a thing at all. Um, one, one thing that's really cool that uh, I didn't really put my finger on before you guys started talking about it was social media and authenticity is such two things that don't really seem to go together you know what I mean um and so it's really cool and refreshing to hear you know like like Jay and Cade and everybody be like well I'm just doing what I normally do and I'm having fun and I'm being myself and people are buying into that not something that um you know you have to keep up this image and try to constantly push out content that isn't your true self and I when I've talked to artists, especially maybe artists who aren't as um, comfortable using different forms of technology and stuff like that, um, it's, it's a little daunting for a few reasons. And a couple of the main reasons I hear is, well, I'd, I'm not that interesting. I'm not, you know, what am I doing that like people would actually want to see? Um, and then also like, well, then I'd have to be consistent. Wouldn't I have to post all the time um, for it to even matter? So those are like two things that I've heard in my consults with artists about 
uh, reasons they don't want to commit to creating social media content. Um, so, I mean, Kate, let's go over to you. What would you like tell tell artists who are concerned about that? Yeah, so I actually wanted to, to touch on that consistency thing because, you know, the Jay was 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 saying he was posting like two times a day and all that stuff. I'm like, yo, that is a lot of work. Right now on TikTok, I'm posting like twice a week. I just, <laughs> I, I got I got more important things to do. I got more important things to do. And you, you know, you kind of got to. Hey, hey, that's real. <laughs> you got to prioritize the things in your life. Obviously, if, if there's something that's, you know, that's going to either pay more or something that's going to get you more followers or something like keep doing that. Do that thing. Prioritize that over TikTok. But TikTok will be TikTok's not going to always be there. But right now it is there. So if you got some extra time, put some time into it. And in terms of consistency, if, if you really want to put time into that is, again, being authentic. I think for artists, it's just, you know, if you're a singer or a rapper or something, just do something that you're really good at, i.e. singing or rapping, and just do that on TikTok. Show off why people should follow you because you're a great singer, because you got great lyrics, because you're a great rapper. Think of, like, the quickest thing to make and just post it, fire and forget. If it's a bad video, no one's going to remember it. No one remembers a bad song. No one remembers a bad TikTok. No one remembers bad content. So, like, just, just put it out there. You ain't lied. You know, not lied. You know, I, I do think that there's some strategy involved when you are creating content. And I'm, I'm someone who does advise uh, clients that I talk to, because I've got a, a consulting group for labels, artist managers and whatnot, uh, and artists that are thinking about their story on social. And we'll talk generally across all socials. Um, I, I do put a lot of time into TikTok. And over the summer, I was averaging six to seven hours per day on TikTok. And there were some days where I was, you know, creating eight or 10 different videos. And it's a lot of time that you put into it, uh, but I also got a lot out of it. I mean, at this point, I'm a near kind of ballpark, 100 million views of the content that I've created. And um, you can absolutely fire off certain uh, parts of you know, yourself in the moment and share that on social. But as an artist, I also think about all of the opportunities that you have to share over the course of your career, whether it's songwriting sessions, uh, descriptions, uh, sort of behind the lyrics videos, you can share some content while you're on tour. Um, you can do some collaborations with other artists. And, you know, those are with the videos that it's just you kind of creating something and sharing it. And we haven't even gone into the uh, options for using like the stitch function where you're gonna take part of somebody's video and then respond to it or using a green screen video in the background or doing a duet. You know, all of these provide different opportunities for content. So as we're consistent, you can tell your story but you can tell your story in different ways throughout the course of, you know, I look at it as a week. What's gonna happen within that week that you can share and then replicate that. Yeah, I was just going to add to that, like, um, also engaging with other accounts, I'd say, especially in the beginning, when you're just like figuring out what kind of content you want to make, watching and engaging with other people's videos, especially people who are also coming up and like trying to get a following, um, or maybe already have the following that you would want. Because like, getting people to like share and do at your videos is what TikTok is what will make TikTok push out your videos to more and more people. And um, yeah, I'd say definitely I agree with both of y'all on the, you can make the stupid videos where you're just like, I thought I, I said something funny, let me post it. Cause those have done really well for me sometimes. And then there's also videos where I put a lot of thought into it. And I think it's important to make sure you're monitoring the consistency between in balance between those types of videos um, to make sure that you're not your account isn't turning into like, I don't know, you want to make sure that your account tells your story. So when people look at it, they can get a sense of you. And if you want to be the funny person who just makes like, you know, the five second joke and then moves on, that's fine. But I'd say as an artist, you have to have a good mix of both because you need like the random views that'll get more views to your videos. And then you also need the targeted views that are like other musicians watching your videos. Anyway. 
that is so real. That is too real. Like, I, I agree with that heavy. Like, because I unintentionally, by doing the whole me putting, like, just something funny that popped up in my head on TikTok, I unintentionally started to follow uh, a creator who was, um, like, you know, really big. Uh, I don't know if y'all know uh, LaRon Hines. He's, like, he interviews, like, the preschoolers in his school. I mean, he, I guess he works with, like, his, like, sister or something like that. So I I jokingly said, I, I was just like, what if Jabria said something, like, extra smart, like, something really smart, like, something scientific? And then that was the thing that took that started like a big smorgasbord of just followers that came to my like TikTok. And I will say that, you know, Imelda, your viewpoint on that is like super dope because like you as as a music artist, I just feel like people need to know that that's a part of you, but that's not your whole thing. You feel what I'm saying? Like people need to like I would much rather people come to me and just rock with me because of my whole self in opposed to just the fact that I am I can crack a joke and it's funny sometimes you know what I'm saying so I definitely agree with you heavy on there and it's it's definitely important for brand recognition too like don't I like I don't want to just all I don't feel funny all the time some days I feel very somber some days I feel you know very you know just relaxed like I don't want to do too much you feel me so I think that like when it comes down to whatever content you putting out, these brands, these artists, these companies, they all keeping their eyes on you and they and they trying to see like what you bring into the table. And that will ideally be the product and or the conversation that follows forward, depending upon what you bring into the table. So yeah, that's, hey, that is some real spiel right there. I'm actually gonna like, counter that a little bit um not trying to confuse any musicians um and definitely not trying to like um i guess negate what people are like what people on the panel are saying be mindful of where where tiktok will take you in terms of the algorithm will put you in a bucket at some point uh, so if you grow your following, for example, around celebrity reporting, and I'm, I'm given that, that example, but I've seen it across the board over a bunch of artists that I work with, like artists that have posted exclusively about food, for example, or food videos. Um, now they're a food influencer on TikTok. And if they try to take that account and start posting music content, no matter if it's good or not, it's not gonna do as well as, um, as it would have if they had a blank account. Uh, the reason is now TikTok thinks, okay, everything this artist posts is about food related content or celebrity reporting content. I literally had a creator that I was working with that every piece of content that she put out was about celebrities. And now she, started posting her own music. And she's like, well, I have 320,000 followers and I get 300 views on my stuff. How is that possible? Am I shadow banned? That also that thing is, doesn't exist. Like, don't worry about it. You're not shadow banned. Um, like, how is that possible? Well, TikTok put you in a bucket. You're in that bucket now. It's gonna be very difficult to get out of it. We're gonna try to get you out of it, but um, you dug yourself in a hole. So be mindful of that as well when you're when you're posting um, and try to definitely like Jay said, like you're a musician. Everybody needs to know that you're not only a musician, but like let people know when they're coming in very early on in your strategy that, you know, hey, I'm a musician. Just to add on to what Itai said. So when I first started TikTok, it was just trying out so much content. And I, I got into this little niche where I was like posting a lot, a lot of motivation and some of it had to do with my music. But then as I started reading the comments, I was realizing, yo, these aren't the followers that I want. These aren't followers that will be a fan of my music. I was lucky enough where like I never blew up that big where I'm like 320,000 followers and I'm only getting 300 views. But I, I just noticed that instantly. 
and I'm like, yo, I got to start posting music content because I want people to like me for my music, not for my motivational speeches and, you know, not for something that I don't really care for doing. I was just doing it for the views. So, you know, if you're getting a ton of views on something, that's awesome. But again, stay authentic, be who you are, do the thing that show off on TikTok what you like doing the most and what you want to be known for. That's what I would say. Yeah, you know, the best practices say to niche down, you know, find your niche, really perfect what you're going to do within that niche. And, and that's what the best practices across all industries will say. Um, uh, and I'm not doing that with my own account. I'm telling three very different stories. And ultimately, um, persistence will, will pay off because I'm, gonna, I'm building sort of three different buckets of followers. Um, my biggest growth is telling jokes about having one hand, you know, like you stitch a video where somebody's got their hand in a bear's mouth. And then I come in and say, you only get a chance to do this twice. So make it count, you know, something like that, 6 million views, tons of followers. And, and that's great. Um, but I don't want to exclusively be telling that story. The van life side, I think there's so much in terms of travel and uh, sharing where I am going to go. Uh, that I want to tell that story. That's what personally is going to matter. And uh, with triathlon, same way, you know, I want to tell those stories, but I don't want three separate accounts. I wanted it to be about me. And, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that um, I'm not niching down right now, but best practice is say, stick with within that bucket and do it really, really well. That's really good advice. Um, just kind of getting to the end of the evening here. So I want to kind of wrap everything up uh, with a couple of questions and you guys can answer them, answer either one or answer both in different ways, whatever you'd like to do. Um, and definitely let people know here at the end of the video where to follow you, what your handle is um, and you know where they can contact you. But my main question is, uh, what are you most proud of that you've done on the platform so far? And then do you have any goals for, you know, the next year about where you want to go with it or what you're hoping to get out of it? Like what's the big picture that you're really um, pursuing as, as you work, work towards this goal. So um, let's start with Amelda, if that's okay. Um. Okay, so I guess my proudest like achievement on the app would be, that's hard. I'd say in general, this is very general, but just the fact that I have, um, like um, Jay was saying, when you're yourself online, or I'd say for me at least, it's like a, extra version of myself like it, it's authentic but this is like me on a hundred um but like I'd say just the realization that I can market myself somewhat as a musician um that's really rewarding because I'm like this TikTok is my side hustle I'm a student I play bassoon um and I'm hoping to pursue music as like a orchestral musician long term so um it's just been really rewarding to be able to already like dip my toe into that and um i'd say my goal with it is to continue gigging locally um and just see where that takes me because um yeah i think that's the most rewarding thing to me is like just performing live that's awesome and so if um we want to check you out live or hear music that you're working on or that you've produced to uh what's the best place to do that where do we go um okay so my spotify is just my name so imelda hay um there's an imelda may but it's not me so it's imelda hay um and then my TikTok handle is also in my name, my username. Um, and I have a gig coming up this weekend. So if y'all are in town, Ooh. hit that big B. 
<laughs> awesome. And I'll post um, everyone's handles in the comments too. Uh, Jay, what about you? Man, I, I was, I, I ain't gonna lie. I was so nervous of you picking me because I had to sit here. I'm like, dude, don't. I don't like, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, the thing that I'm most proud of, I guess, is I, I'm naturally introverted. Okay. I just keep it real. I am naturally introverted. I, public speaking is a thing that like, I, I, I say this for real, but like, <laughs> I say this for real, but like public speaking, you know, freaks me out. But when I'm nervous, I laugh and it's kind of like a thing where I'll just do that. So, um, you know, TikTok, just the platform in general, just, it made me feel good to know that like, I could just go, what? And, and people would be like, Oh, check him out. And I'll be like, wait, hey, wait. <laughs> I'm like, wait. But knowing it's it's a clash because you I know why I'm why I'm doing this. You know, I know why I make music. I I I when I was 12, I was like, I'm gonna be the greatest rap star ever. As I was listening to Ludacris. So it was it was a it was a time, you know what I mean? Like I wanted the glamorous, glamorous. That was my whole thing. I was listening to Fergie. Um my proudest moment, though, I guess, is reaching the the amount of followers that I had because I literally couldn't even conceive that that was possible. Um, it was it happened all in a night, a week span. Actually, it was it happened in a week span. I'll take that back. The majority of it happened in a day, but I think that feels good to know that like I can just pretty much. I can be I can be serious and I can you know be 100% myself on the platform and I know that there are people out there at least 175,000 people and maybe pessimistically the one percent of that that resonate with me or are able to accept me as an artist and the thing where I want to go um that's an even better question um I guess I'm just kind of letting my art speak for itself and kind of hoping that people if people want to be a part of the journey i guess like to see where it where it takes me because i got a lot of things planned you know um just got uh i don't i think i said this off record but i just got signed to a um a brand publishing a brand sponsorship thing so they send me stuff Congrats. thank you and they send me stuff and i'm i'm excited about that and um, who knows what's going to happen. I hope we can look back at this live stream and be like, yo, I didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just grateful for life, man. Like, for real. Like, I mean, not trying to sound like mad deep or whatever, but like, I'm just grateful for life pretty much. Like, I, I don't, you know, I'm from Detroit. It's not like a lot of, besides Trey Little, it's not a lot of people from my city that's kind of like represented and stuff like that and uh, on the TikTok space. And, you know, everyone has their own viewpoint of my city, but I feel proud and I feel good to know that and I am working towards the journey of people understanding that, you know, there's so much more to the city of where I come from and there's so much more to J Square too. So yeah, and Michigan rocks. <laughs> nice shirt by the way Love yeah it. i just threw it on i don't know i just found it just found it it was actually fit it was comfortable yeah. Uh, yeah. who knew <laughs> yeah, i just found it in a drawer somewhere <laughs> oh my it nicely kade uh what about you what what's next for you and what, what are you most proud of well the, the biggest thing i got at tiktok is a dedicated fan base who actually wants to give me money for my music and that is just when someone wants to pay you for the art that you're making that is it's a, it's another it's another feeling especially when there's like a bunch of people and not just like one person giving you a thousand dollars like a thousand people giving you like a dollar for their for 
a song that you're creating that you made in business as well. So I think just I'm very, very grateful that TikTok has has given me the ability to connect with all these people. And very, very few of them are from Canada. They're all from the States and because like TikTok is just so big in the States, right? It, it's it's awesome. So just connecting with people all around the world, you know, connecting with people like you, um, everyone on this panel, it's it's been awesome. All the connections, man. I just that's part of the best thing that I've gotten out of TikTok, just meeting so many people. And in the future, like I I don't I don't know with, with TikTok because I've gotten so many opportunities from TikTok and now that I don't even have that much time for TikTok anymore, I still will be pushing TikTok, just not as much as I was before. And I don't know, you know, if TikTok like it just disappears like Vine, I'll be fine. If it keeps going, I'm gonna keep going with it. I'm just you know, just keep going with TikTok, keep doing my thing, keep having fun with it. It's it's a great platform, just you know, pushing myself to always make better content because making better content means you have to be creative and if you're always practicing being creative that just helps you make better music in general so just existing on tiktok that's probably what i'm looking forward to in the future very cool point and we should connect with you on every platform sounds like oh, yes <laughs> sorry sorry my bad dm me at music by Cade. i love talking to everyone who's watching this is probably an artist or is interested in pursuing music like hit me up in the dms uh, I give way too much free advice, but I don't care because I just want to win. I just want all of us to win together. So just hit me up on Instagram at Music by Cade. Let, let's talk. Let's be friends. Let's let's give each other a hug when we meet in person after this pandemic. That's awesome, and that's kind of what we're all about is the, the collaboration over competition. Because if we're all better, you know, we're all doing okay. It's 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 good for everybody. So, um, and. Tell us about how we can learn more about Push Talk um, if artists are interested in finding out more and, and talking with you about that. Uh, where do they go and what should we do? Cool. I'm actually going to start with the first one, if that's okay. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So the thing I'm most proud of uh, this year, to date, we've helped, um, we've helped artists get over, over, over a quarter billion views. Um, so that, like, I looked at that number and I was like, nah, this is not true. And I was like, I, I hit refresh like a bunch of times and I'm like, no, there's no way, man. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like, it's not the silver lining, but that's like definitely a good indicator for me to look at it and be like, shit, this is, this is, this is awesome. Uh, but really the most important thing I think is like the amount of, relationships we facilitated uh, between artists and fans and that's the most important thing because if if one artist came out of this with a few fans even in the pocket uh we've probably made a difference on those fans lives and on those artists lives um because like every fan is really an opportunity for for musicians to really kind of like i guess live make a living you know not having to go hungry. Um, in terms of where you can find out about us, uh, you can go to pushtalk.com, learn a little bit about what we do, or you can DM me on it, on Instagram, uh, push.talk. That's like pretty much it. Um, I hope I didn't cut out just now. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, just DM me on Instagram. I will burden you with free advice. I might even like hop on a Google call with you because I. I literally do that all day. I love learning from artists and what, about what they're doing and then loving to share, you know, I love sharing the knowledge. That's awesome. And thank you for, for spending your evening with us. And last but not least, um, what are you most proud of today? And where do you want to go with TikTok? What's your next goal? So I'm most proud of amplifying disabled voices. That's something that traditionally social media does not do a great job with is uh, amplifying marginalized voices. And um, I built a bit of a community of uh, one handed creators uh, that are a part of my account. And so, you know, we can tell jokes about, you know, hating buying gloves because we pay twice as many twice as much money for them. Um, you know, I'd rather buy a pair of right handed gloves. Uh, and, you know, like, like, we can relate to each other on that level. And that's something that has empowered some smaller creators 
to step out and start to share their disabilities as well. And so I'm most proud of that experience uh, with TikTok because that wasn't something that I was expecting. And over the course of this next year, um, I want to tell some bigger stories. You know, my goal is to try to race in the Ironman World Championships, and I want to take this next year and tell that story. And music is going to be a big part of that. The soundtrack to these videos, um, the soundtrack to my life, because music does play a huge part in everything that I do. Um, I want to be sure that I can amplify some of the artists that I love listening to with them featured in some of these videos and, uh, and share this pathway to you know, ultimately an athletic achievement that few people get to uh, embark upon. So I'm not there yet. Um, it's all part of that story arc. Well, that's really cool. And um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for spending your evening with us. Um, I know that you're really <laughs> busy people and you're busy um, making content. So um, we can't wait to watch you continue to be successful on this platform and with everything that you do. And uh, all of your handles we'll put in the comments in the description on this video. I would encourage everyone watching to reach out and, um, you know, like Kate said, just say, say hi and um, ask any more questions or, you know, send some encouraging words. We appreciate that you spent the time with us. This video is going to be posted on our website, YouTube, and Facebook as well. And as always, you can check out more upcoming sessions at michiganmusicalliance.org or our Facebook page. Our next session is on Monday, October 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to be talking about building a team. Uh, how do you know if you're ready for a booking agent? How do you know if you're ready for a manager? How do you pick the right manager? And what should those relationships look like? Um, and we're just going to kind of break down how to figure out who you need in your corner. Uh, so that's going to be a really great session. We've got our friend Jay returning. Uh, Jay is from Label Logic out in LA. We've got Amber Vice of the Accidentals and so many other panelists. Um, I, I'm really excited to hear from and, and hear their, uh, you know, things they've learned so you don't have to. <laughs> um, but thank you again, everyone, and can't wait to see you next time. Have a great night. Peace. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>